Well, we've been talking about prayer. We're going to go down, that, go down that same path this morning. Because I'm telling you, we had 44 people show up for prayer Monday night. Yeah. Come on, I need, I need a bigger amen. A bigger, come on, that is amazing. You know, our, we, had, we had 36 a couple weeks back, and I was just overwhelmed at 36. But I was like, oh, what, you know, we, what happens if we get to 50? And I was like, oh, Lord, what happens if, the, if, if, if not just 30%, but 40%, 50%, 75% Amen. show up for prayer? What, what if we're just giving, giving our lives to prayer? Because that's, you know, the Bible says pray without ceasing. Pray, pray, may not to always pray and not faint. We're to be a, we're a house of prayer. I mean, everything we do, prayer is the center of this house. I mean, we love, to, we love to sing. We love to worship. But my house is called the house of prayer. And so this is who we are. We're people of prayer. Amen? And so we got to get this down. we got to get this figured out. What does this look like? What does this mean that we are a house of prayer, that I can pray at all times? Because you know what? Your spirit loves to pray. Your spirit's excited about praying. Come on, it's not a sacrifice. It's a joy. It's a privilege. I get to come into the house of God with my brothers and my sisters, and we get to join arms and, and pray together and worship him and seek his face and see him show up and do awesome things. So I'm telling you what, I am so blessed. When we have 44 people show up for prayer, I'm just telling you, that's, that's amazing. You have no idea how, how amazing that really is. It's amazing. That's amazing. And it's only going to get better in Jesus' name. We're going to go deeper because we're getting, we're going, our roots are going deeper. We're becoming a people of prayer. And you're not going to be tossed to and fro by the, by the winds and the waves and the, and the adversities that are facing you. Because, you, come on, you're, you're, you're not a shallow Christian. You're a Christian that, that's been sown to the Spirit, crucifying the flesh, feeding the Spirit. And you're building yourself up. You're building your, your spirit man up. You're exercising yourself. And you're becoming a, a warrior in the, in the kingdom of God. So, you know, prayer, I'll tell you what. You know, I'm, I'm talking about prayer. What prayer isn't, okay? I'm going to tell you just a little bit what prayer isn't. Prayer isn't just your wish list. I'm, I'm not saying that God won't bless you. He wants to bless you. But it's, not, it's, it's more than just, uh, it's more than just the, the, you know, your, your carnal desires and your fleshly desires. And I want a new car. And I want, you know, like a kid in a candy store. You know, give me, give me, give me. Whatever, you know, that's, that's not really what prayer is. You know, it is, and it's not twisting God's arm and begging God and trying to get him to do something he doesn't want to do. That's not prayer. I'm not trying to beg God to do something that he doesn't want to do. That's the opposite of prayer. <laughs> prayer is where you come in agreement with the known will of God. And you know this is the heart of God. This is the will of God. And you come into agreement and you, work, and you co-labor together with him. And you pray his heart. And you pray his desires. And you pray his will. Right? That's what prayer is. Prayer is you and God coming together in agreement. And the body of Christ coming together in agreement with the Spirit of God. Now, if you look in, uh, let me pull this up for you. Because if you're praying carnal, fleshly prayers, you're praying amiss. And as baby Christians, it's easy to pray amiss. Because we want a lot of things that, you know what, are nowhere in the plan of God. And it's not going to bless you or bless anybody else. It's just to consume it upon your own lusts and your own carnal desires. And God will bless, he said, God will bless you with some of them things. But he said, seek ye first his kingdom. Seek his will. And these other things that you think you might enjoy, they might just start showing up. <laughs> right? But don't, but, but don't make them your focus. Make Jesus your focus. So Ephesians, and this is one of my, this is part of our armor. It says in Ephesians 6, 17 and 18, it says embrace the power. Of course, and it goes through the whole list of the helmet, the, the breastplate. It goes through the whole thing, the, the belt of truth, your feet shot of the preparation of the gospel, the sword of the spirit, right? Take the mighty razor sharp spirit sword of the spoken word of God. Pray, and this is part of our armor, praying passion. Some say passionately. Do we have any, I mean, it's one thing to pray. And just kind of like, is it time to go yet? I'm talking, that's not really passionate praying. That's not fervency. Come on, with expectation and desire. Come on, praying passionately in the Spirit. Now, that's the point. It says in, in the King James, praying, praying always at all times in the Spirit. So when it, when it says in the Spirit, that just takes the flesh 
all the way out of the picture. That means you're never praying after the lust of the flesh. You're always praying in the spirit, which always means you're praying the perfect will of God. Praying what? In the spirit. That means you're praying the will of God as you constantly enter. Someone say intercede. We're going to be talking about that word quite a bit coming here in just a little bit. Intercede with every form. Someone say every form. Every form, every form of prayer at all times. Pray the blessings of God upon all his believers. Okay, so pray, intercede with all forms of prayer. How many know that there's just more than one type of prayer? I mean, in the spirit, there's you got to be able to shift gears and go from, from, from one mode to the next mode. There's a time to soak in his presence. There's a time to go into warfare and, 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 and contend for what God wants you to contend for and to bind the works of the enemy and to loose the things that God wants to loose. Come on, there's a, there's a time where you go into battle in the spirit. Amen? There's other times you just soak in his presence. There is prayers of supplication and petitions. Right? Make your request be made known to God. There's a, there, there's a time for that, but there's all these different types of prayer. There's travail and labor where you birth things in the Spirit. There's intercessory prayer. And that's, that's really the part that I really feel like is on my heart this morning, is I want to really talk about intercessory prayer. You know what? But the Bible says we have to pray. It says you have not because you... How many know that God, God's, God, God may, may not open the door if, if you, just because it's his will that the, that door be open? He says, if you don't knock, guess what? It's not going to open. If you don't seek, you're not going to. If you don't ask, you're not going to receive. Amen? But if you, if you knock and keep on knocking and ask and you go after God and, you're, and you pursue him. Because, I mean, he wants, he's, he's got a plan. He's got a will. But he wants you to pursue it. He wants you to ask him for it. He wants you to come in, 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 in agreement with it and, and, uh, and, and just believe for it. Pray it out in, in, to, so for it to manifest. Amen? So I, put, I wrote down, prayer is a believer working together with God by speaking and declaring God's will into the earth and over our lives. Individual and corporate prayerlessness will cause God to let many of his desires and promises go unanswered. I'm going to say that again. Individual and corporate prayerlessness will cause God to let many of his desires and promises go unanswered. We, we have to become people of prayer. Okay. Now, this might be a, a fairly short message. That's okay. Um, but we'll see. Sometimes it goes longer than I think. You just never know. So... So I want to talk about this, this, I believe it's one of the most highest forms of prayer. One of the, it's, it's something that we're called to do. It's intercessory prayer. You know, the Bible says in several places that he's made as kings and priests. Some say priests. Intercession is a priestly prayer. Okay? You know what priests did in the Old Testament? They would stand between, they would stand up between God and a nation between God and people. And the priests would stand in the gap and they would mediate. They would, they would intercede and they'd, and they'd offer up sacrifices on behalf of somebody that wasn't even them. Yes, they'd offer up sacrifices for themselves, but they'd ac- offer up sacrifices for people, come on, that they didn't, they were, they didn't even, may not even know them, may not have any relation to them in a sense. They might be distant. I mean, they're just a, a, a face, but they've come, and the priest would come, and they would stand in the gap for this individual, and they would intercede for them, and they'd offer up sacrifices on another person's behalf. Yes. And the Bible says you are a, a holy nation, a peculiar people, you're a royal priesthood. So I titled this message, The Priesthood of the Believer. Now, I, know, I think Derek Prince has got a message out there, and I didn't listen to it, but now I've seen it, uh, or maybe a book or something called The Priesthood of the Believer. I believe it's probably a good one to listen to because I like Derek Prince. But uh, I, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that title, The Priesthood of the Believer. You're kings and priests. And I want you to know that, that it's, a, it's one of the most privileged and honored things you'll ever do it's it's a prayer of love that you can't i mean that that not everyone has if you're a born-again christian you're supposed to have it 
the love of God inside of you. Come on, we're, it's not just about me. It's about everybody else. Amen? And when, you, and when you, Michaela prayed this morning, that was an intercessory prayer. She was standing in the gap on the behalf of somebody else. And you know God hears them prayers and he answers them prayers. Amen? So you get, you get the honor of, of, of standing, because uh, God wants to do something. He wants to pour out a blessing, right? But he, he needs someone to stand in the gap, especially for, for the people that are outside that don't know Jesus. They don't know, they don't know that they're lost. They don't even know that God cares about them or loves them, and they have nobody praying for them, possibly nobody. I mean, they may, be, they may not have any relatives or no grandmothers, no nobodies that are interceding on their behalf. And they need the church. They need someone that, has a, that God would put them inside of your heart. And, he, and I'm, he'll put a burden in your heart for them. He'll put the love of God in your heart for them. And you can pray for them. And it'll open the door for God to release the blessing, to bind the, the adversary, and open the door for God to move on their behalf. God works through prayer. He's looking for someone to stand in the gap, to intercede. It's how many know that that's what Jesus did for you? You know that's what Jesus still does? Now I'm going to look at this in Hebrews chapter 7, 25. Check this out. Hebrews 7, 25 says, Wherefore he is also able to save to the uttermost them that come. Maybe I should start over. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing that he ever liveth to make what? Intercession for them. Now, if you look at that same verse in the, uh, the Passion Translation, it says, because he ever lives to what? To pray continually for them. It's the prayer of intercession. I want you to know that Jesus today is praying for you. Come on, he ever lives. He's able to save to the uttermost. Why? Because they, even right now, he's interceding your name before the Father. Can you believe that? God is interceding for you, Betty. He's interceding for me, for Donna, for Rebecca. He's interceding your name. He's saying, my Father, I'm interceding for them. Oh, Father, I'm, he's lifting my name up. Oh, I can't. I just, it, just, it just amazes me that my Jesus is praying for me. He's praying for you. But he's, he's the great high priest. We're priests, but he's a great high priest. He stands in the gap for us. He intercedes for us. But then he says, you know what? I've called you to be a, a kingdom of priests, to intercede for others on their behalf. And I'm telling you what, it's a, it's a high calling. It's a great ministry, and it's important. Amen? So this is what... Uh, this is, what, this is what this, when you intercede, here's what it does. It opens the door. How many know that a lot of times their sin and their wickedness is calling out for judgment? Because justice requires judgment. So there's, there's, their sin and their wickedness is calling out for judgment. But there's another side of God that's called, he's the God of all mercies. Okay? And so there's something that's calling out for judgment. And God, God knows that if they continue down this road, it's going to destroy them. He's, they're going to be lost forever. But that's not the heart of God. The heart of God is that they repent. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But he's looking for somebody to stand in the gap so that they could have a chance. Come on, you're here because somebody prayed for you. I would almost guarantee you're here because somebody prayed for you. You had a grandmother. You had a mom or a dad. You had another, a Christian brother or sister somewhere that lifted up your name before the Father. I would, be, I would dare to venture every person in here had, a, had, uh, had some person that prayed them into the kingdom, that prayed for God to come and release the goodness of God into their life. Amen? Your highest calling. Your greatest calling. Now look at this verse in Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 22. Y'all probably know this, but I'm going to share it with you here. He said, I look for someone among them who would build up the wall and stand before me in the gap on behalf of the land so I wouldn't have to destroy it. But I found no one. Was God wanting to destroy the land? When God sent Jonah to Nineveh, was God wanting to destroy Nineveh? Come on, if he wanted to destroy Nineveh, he would never have sent Jonah, right? He would have just destroyed him. He just wiped him off. He wouldn't send somebody to warn him. You don't warn somebody when you're fixing to take him out. You kind of go and just let the hammer drop, right? But no, that's not the heart of the Father. He loved the people of Nineveh just like he loves you. 
and he loves those that are living in wickedness. Those that some of them people, you have a hard time even mentioning their names. You know who I'm talking about. There's people in government. There's people, uh, groups of people that, that you don't approve of their lifestyle. And, you, and you're, you're struggling to, to, you don't even want to sit next to them. You don't, you'd rather not even, you know, even look at them. And God says, you know, I love that person. Who's going to intercede for that person? It's one thing to intercede for, for your family, for your loved ones. But who's going to intercede for that? Come on, they're so ugly, they're so mean that nobody likes them. No one's going to pray for them. They're all wishing. I had a guy at work that he was real fast to, to say this. He'd always say when he found somebody that got on his nerves, he'd say, damn them to hell. And he meant it. And I was like, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. What you reap is what you sow is what you reap. Come on. He that's merciful shall obtain mercy. And he that's, that's quick to judge will be quickly judged. With the same measure you judge others, the Bible says, with that same measure, I'm going to use to judge you. And the same measure you show mercy to others is the same measure I'm going to show mercy to you. Right? But we, he needs, he's looking for somebody. Because I want you to know, he's a just God. But what do you see in heaven? In this, or what do you see in the, in the middle of the tabernacle, in the holy of holies? What's in the center of it? There's something called the ark. And what's on top of the ark? The mercy seat. I just, I'm overwhelmed with the mercy of God. The mercy seat. It's the center of who God is. He says, in Micah, he says, I delight in mercy. It's called the God of all mercies. What did somewhere, somewhere in the Bible, I think it's the Hebrew children, it says, it's because of your mercies were not consumed. His mercies are new every morning and they would cry out bless the lord for his mercy endures forever mercy mercy the center of who god is is mercy he doesn't he he desires mercy over judgment yes there's judgment coming but his heart is to show mercy his heart is to see repentance and, and transformation so he can show his, his heart is to, for mercy. His heart is for them. Come on, he's, he's not out here just to bring the hammer down. His, he said, I'm like, Lord, don't, we can't come back yet. We've got to wait just one more, another day, another year, because they're, they're, they're hard. Or they're still far away. Come on, it says he's not willing that any should perish. And there's a, a scripture in Peter where it says they're mocking him. And they're saying, oh, where's his return? We've been hearing about it all of our life. And look, it, there's, it's, it's, it's nothing it's nothing and they're mocking God they're mocking him and they don't even know that the one they're mocking they're the reason he hasn't come back it says because he's long suffering not willing that they should perish he's given them another chance he's given them another day another day another chance not today father can we give them, it's, there's a story in the Bible about, I think it's about a fig tree, and it, it didn't bear any fruit for three years, and, and, they, the, and the, the master of the, of, the, of the place came and said, cut that thing down, away with it, why is it taking up waste, it's taking up ground, but it's producing nothing, and the gardener says, oh, wait a minute, just give it one more year, I'm going to water it extra, I'm going to give it some extra fertilizer, come back next year, let's just check out, let's just see if there's fruit next year. Don't, don't destroy it yet, Father. Can you wait one more year? Can we just intercede one more year? Can we believe for a breakthrough one more year? Oh, Father God, merciful Father, the God of all mercies. How many times did he forgive you? Five times? Six? Or is it 6,000? Five million times. But the mercies of God, I wouldn't be here and you wouldn't be here. Come on, how dare that we don't show mercy who have obtained such great mercy. And how dare we not intercede for the lost. Because, but for the grace of God, you'd be in the same boat. You don't know what they've been through. You don't know what, you, you haven't been through their, their, their battles. You haven't been through that. I was hearing a story about a, a pastor was, was sharing this. That this, this young boy was having a sex change. And she, she was actually, a, so she came up to him. She said, why do you want to be a girl? And he said, because I hate my dad. And he said, I, I hate him so much, I don't even want to be associated with a, and he wouldn't say the word, he'd said M-A-N. He wouldn't even say the word man. He, would, he spelled it out. I don't want to be associated or identify with a M-A-N. And you don't know what that child had went through. And the abuse, 
to neglect. You have no idea what would get him to a place where he would hate even the thought of a man. And we're quick to, to point our fingers and maybe hurl a stone or two. But God says, mercy. Who's going to pray for that person? Who's going to pray that God heals of their wounds and, and opens their eyes and heals their heart and shows them the love of God and shows them the mercy of God and, and who they were created to be? They don't even know that God loves them. They don't know that he, they were created in his image to, be, to, to carry, to be a son of God, to be, a, to, to be royalty, to be in the house of God, to be wrapped in the arms of his love, to just to know his love, to know his provision. They were created to, to be loved. They were created to become loved and to be loved. Come on. And, and, and so we, it's up to the church to pray. It's up to me and you to pray. So I, I picked out two different examples. Uh, one is the worst example of an intercessor in the Bible. It may not be the worst, but he's definitely a, a good example of probably not a good intercessor. And then I picked my favorite intercessor in the Bible. And my favorite intercessor in the Bible Actually, I'm mean, before I pull this up, I want to pull up this screenshot from Ezekiel because I didn't share this one. So it, that, that the scripture about who will stand in the gap, this is the voice translation, which I really like the voice. And this is what it says in, in Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30. I searched for one man among them, a man who could build the wall and stand in the gap before me and advocate. Come on, you're, you're, pleading, on, you're pleading on their behalf. You're standing in the gap for, their, for them. They don't know God. They don't know how to pray. But you're standing in the gap, and you're pleading their cause it's, um, for, to advocate for the land, the man who could convince me not to destroy them, to destroy it. He said, but I found nobody. Can you imagine? He was like, I've got to find someone to intercede. Who's going to? Come on, God, God ju judgment, justice is calling for judgment. But God says, I want to show mercy, but I need to find somebody who will pray. I need to find somebody who will stand in the gap for them. He uses people, and it's, come on, he gave you authority. Well, you say, well, God could just do it. No, he gave the earth to men, and he gave us authority. Yes. And he said, whatever you declare, whatever you bind, whatever you loose, that's the way it's going to be. Yes. Come on, well, God is sovereign, and he can do what he wants. Well, Unless my people pray, the land will be destroyed. Is that what it says? So it isn't just up to God. It's up to us to intercede and to pray. So Moses. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you some scriptures here in Moses. And uh, I say I am. I've lost something here. I do this every, every, about every other time I, I, I go here. Is Chris handy? Come on, Chris. You're going to have to figure this out for me one more time. I know there's a way to do this, but it's, see if you can get that up. So Moses, um, one of the things you see about Moses is, how many know that, that Moses didn't pick himself to be, a, to be the leader? Come on. Who, who, God called Moses out of the burning bush and said, go set my people free. And Moses didn't even want to go. He said, go send somebody else. I can't talk. I'm the wrong guy. And, and God said, no, you're the man. You're it. Now you go. I'm, I'll be with you. And you can take Aaron, your, your brother, with you. But you're the guy that I've chosen to pick to set my people free. He did not put himself there. Thank you so much, Chris. There we go. So anyhow. So every time they come against Moses, who are they coming against? Every time they're rebelling against Moses, who are they rebelling against? How many know that they rebelled against Moses a lot? And so here they come. They're mad. They want to stone him. They want to, get, they want to go back to Egypt. They're, I mean, it's constant. One to one. I mean, I could probably show you half a dozen times where they came against Moses. But what you see every time is Moses doing something. And he falls on his face. And he, he cries for their mercy. He cries for God. to Because he knows, he knows when they come against him, they're coming against God. And he knows the hand of God is fixing to fall on them. That judgment's fixing to fall. And what does he do? He stands between them and God. And he cries out, Lord, stop, stop, stop. Have mercy on them. <coughs> Don't destroy them. You, come on, you love them. You, you, and how many know that God really didn't want to destroy them? I believe that's why he picked Moses, because he knew that Moses would be the one that would stand between them and judgment, and he'd, he'd intercede for them, and God wouldn't have to destroy them, but God could bless them. And God chose Moses, a man after his own heart, because he knew that Moses wouldn't say, just wipe them out, God. They're trying to hurt me. They're trying to stone me. They're slandering my name. So go ahead, God said, I'll just, he even, he even like, he even, 
He just is tweeting the pot and said, Moses, I'm going to wipe all this rebellious people out, and I'm going to raise up a generation out of your seed. And he actually tells Moses, he says, I'm going to actually read a scripture here so I can find this. Exodus 32, listen to this. God says, now therefore, let me alone. Quit, quit standing between me and the people of Israel. He's like God. So, I mean, God is like, he's pretty ticked off. That my wrath may wax hot against them, and that I may consume them, and I will make of you a great nation. Wow. And listen. Moses says, yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book which thou hast written. Pretty powerful words. Talk about somebody standing in the gap. Saying, Lord, I know you love them. I know that you're, you're upset and your, your, your justice is calling for judgment and they deserve it. Their sin and their wickedness deserve it. But I know you're a God of mercy. Remember when God, he, Moses said, Lord, show me your glory? Remember that? What did, what did, he, what did he make? He caused his goodness to pass before Moses. And he said, I'm gracious, long-suffering, compassionate, full of mercy. On the, all the good things of God, that's who he was. The God of all mercies. That's the heart of God. At the center of it all is the mercy seat. Jesus, he took his own blood. He, this, is, this is God in the flesh. Jesus, he poured out his blood for God so loved the world that he interceded for the world and he poured out his blood and he took it before the throne of heaven and he takes his own blood and he pours it out of the mercy seat and said, Father, I died for the sins of the whole world that whosoever will can, can become to come to know and be brought back into the house. Come on, there's no, there's no, there's no, no one that's went too far. There's hope for everybody. I poured out the blood on the mercy seat. The holy of the holies. The very heart of who he is. He desires mercy. He delights in mercy. Now we know judgment does come. And, it, and we're, I'm not saying that it's, he puts it off forever. But he does give us more chances than you, you could ever imagine. He gives us every chance to come back to him. Now I'm going to just read a few more real quick to go through here. This is, these are all different, all different uh, situations. I didn't go into the stories behind them, but you'll see it. He's, this is uh, Numbers 14, 12. It says, I will smite them with the pestilence and disinherit them, and I will make of thee a greater nation and a mightier than they. So it's kind of the same story again, but listen to it. Listen to what Moses does. Moses says, And now I beseech thee, let the power of my Lord be great, according as thou hast spoken, saying, he's, 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 telling the, he's, he's telling the Lord what he had seen when he, when he said, Show me your glory. He's repeating it back to him. Remember, the Lord is long-suffering and great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. Pardon, I beseech thee, the iniquity of this people, according unto the greatness of thy mercy. And as thou hast forgiven this people from Egypt until now, and the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word. How many know that God, when you pray, God answers? When you intercede for somebody else, God says, you know what, now you've got my heart. Now you've got my vision. This is the heart of who Jesus is. He's the high priest, but you're, the, you're a priest, and you're to intercede for the lost, just like Jesus does, just like Jesus did. It's the very center of who God is. And when you pray this prayer, it's, a, it's not about you. It's about somebody else that needs God in their life. They need the mercy of God to intervene because they're, they're standing on the brink of destruction. They're one step away from who knows what. And you know, your prayers make all the difference. Okay, I'm going to read one more, then I'm going to go to my, the, the person that's the opposite of this. <laughs> so let me look at here at Numbers. Let me see if I, if I gave him this. I may not have gave him this scripture. Mm, nope, I don't see it. Okay, I'm going to skip it then. All right, we're going to go right to the, to the opposite uh, a person that I would say is an example of an intercessor, and it would be Jonah. Jonah, Jonah, Jonah. Oh my goodness. Jonah ran away because he knew one thing. He didn't run away just because he didn't want to go. He ran away because he did not like the people of Nineveh. And he knew if he went, he knew if he went there and they repented. He knew what would happen. 
that God would forgive them and have mercy on them. And that's why he went to Tarshish and ran away from the presence of God because he knew that God was goodness. He repeats the same verse here that God, when, God, when Moses said, show me your glory, and, and he, he repeats the same phrase. He says, I knew you were gracious. I knew you were long-suffering. I knew you were full of mercy. That's why I didn't go. Now, let me just show you this in, 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 in Jonah. Jonah chapter 4, verse 2. And he prayed unto the Lord and said, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying when I was yet in my own country? Therefore I fled before unto Tar Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repentest thee of the evil. Therefore now, O Lord, I beseech thee, I beseech thee, my, take, I beseech thee, my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. Now I'm going to read the same, the same verse again in the, uh, the Living Bible. And it says, he complained to the Lord about it. This is exactly what I thought you'd do, Lord, when I was there in my own country. And you first told me to come here. That's why I ran away to Tarish. For I knew you were a gracious God, merciful, slow of anger, and full of kindness. And I knew how easily you could, can you could cancel your plans for destroying these people. Please kill me, Lord. I'd rather be dead than alive when nothing that I've told them happens. Right? What did he say? Yet 40 days and Nineveh will be destroyed. Come on. I mean, that gets your attention. This guy got swallowed by a whale and spit out. And he shows up on your, on your doorstep. And I mean, he looks like a, inside of a, of a whale's belly. He's covered in seaweed. I don't know. But I mean, uh, it, they got his attention somehow. And he's saying, yet 40 days and Nineveh will be destroyed. That would get my attention. Someone started walking up and down Benita. Yet 40 days, Manita will be destroyed. We might wake up. And so the people put on sackcloth and the king, and they, they fasted and they prayed, and guess what happened? Exactly, God showed mercy. Come on, God showed mercy. And, but but, but the point, my point is, is that Jonah, that's not the heart of an intercessor. He was running away from their blessing. He was running away from, from, from their from their deliverance. He was hoping that God would wipe them out. In fact, when, he, when God refused to wipe them out, Jonah is, is even, even after God saved his own life from the whale, now Jonah's upset because they're not being wiped out. He says, okay, just keep, you're not going to kill them, just kill me. Right? It's the opposite of what an intercessor does. An intercessor says, you know what? Don't kill them. If you're going to kill anybody, kill me. I'm going to stand in the gap for them. But don't take their life. Forgive their sins, forgive their iniquities. And I just want to say, what it, I'm going to go a little bit deeper here, but an intercessor, when you, when you become an intercessor, you, you take their place before God. You come to God as if you were that person. And you, and, and you feel their pain. You put yourself into their shoes, right? I don't know, maybe they're, maybe they're like Jason. Maybe he's ministering, Jared, I'm sorry, Jared. You're ministering to people in prison, and you can intercede for them, but you put yourself in their place, and you feel the hurt, their loneliness, their pain, whatever, they're, whatever, the, whatever it is, but you, 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 you intercede for them before God as if you were them. I mean, you have that passion. You have that, you, you just, you, 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 there's, a, there's a fervency. There's a depth to it. There's more, it's, more, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a heart cry because you, you know that, you know that, uh, that, you're, that they're, they're, they can't pray, but they need you to pray. I, I guess the closest thing I could probably relate it to would be praying for your children. Because, you know, it's easy to pray for your children. Right? I mean, they may not like you. They may be living in sin. They may be a mess. But what do you do? You keep on praying. They're your children. You love them. You care about them. You know that they're, they're, they're heading towards destruction and that your prayers are making a difference. Your prayers are giving God an, another day, another opportunity to touch their hearts, to touch their lives. And so you, can, you pray for them and you don't quit. You intercede for them. There's a fervency. Oh, God, save my child. Oh, God, I'm not letting go of him. Oh, God, come. Minister your mercy to him again today. Open his eyes. Eyes. Oh, Lord, rebuke the devourer. Oh, God. Oh, Father, open his eyes to truth. Lord, open, take the blinders off their eyes. Oh, give them a spiritual wake-up call. Lord, whatever it takes, set them free. I pray that prayer. Lord, I don't care what it takes, if it costs them everything, but they make Jesus Christ the Lord of their life, and they end up with you forever, then so be it. But, Lord, whatever the cost, save my children. 
And it's easy to pray for them when they're your children. But it's hard to pray for them when they're your enemies. When they're the you know, people that you, that you, you know, we're like Jonah. Yeah, I, I could pray for my own country, but I'm not going to pray for Nineveh. Uh, you know, we, uh, when Trump was in office, we prayed for Trump. I remember we have a prayer group, and we mentioned his name every morning. We, oh, we speak blessing over him. We speak protection over him. But since he's been out of office, I haven't heard Biden's name mentioned maybe about two or three times in three, three years. And I'm guilty because I'm one of them. I'm like, I don't, do I, really, I don't really want to pray for, I don't want to pray for him. You know? I don't agree with him. I don't like what he's doing. But the Bible says pray. Pray for those. Especially those that are in authority. Because the Bible says that the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. And your prayers open the door for God to do things. And he can turn it whichever way he wills. But he uses prayer. He says, pray for those in authority. Lord, forgive us for not praying for, for President Biden. I've, I've been repulsed in some ways by some of the things that, that he's done, uh, by, by, the whole, by a lot of things. Lord, forgive me for not praying for the people that I don't agree with. We have to pray. I have to pray. Pray for your enemies. Pray for those that despitefully use you. Amen? So I think the closest thing probably to intercession is when you, when you pray for others as if you're praying for yourself or praying for your children. I think a lot of times when I'm praying in ministry for people, I'll start to see them as I, if, if they're not my children, but I'll, especially if they're younger, obviously, like my kids' age, I'll start to pray for them as if they were my own kids. I'll, that's, just how, that's just something that, that comes over me. I'll see them as if they were my own children, and I'll feel that compassion as if they were my own children, and I'll pray for them as if they were my own children. Does that make sense? Okay, and, and that's probably the closest thing I can c talk about intercession is when you pray for somebody as if they were somebody you loved with all your heart, and you intercede for them on their behalf for God's mercy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wind up here with a couple, a couple more thoughts. Because Jesus is, he's not coming back. One of the reasons he's not come back is he's giving them one more day. Now in Isaiah 61, oh yeah, we've got, we're, we got plenty of time. Isaiah 61, look at this. No, that's not, let's see if I got this. Yeah, okay. It says, in Isaiah, in Isaiah 61, it says, now Jesus is quoting this verse as he comes out of the wilderness. We all know the story. He was tempted for 40 days, and he comes back in the power of the Spirit, and he comes out of the wilderness, and he comes, he comes into the temple. He opens up the scroll to the book of Isaiah. Remember? And he quotes Isaiah, and he says, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your ears. You all know the story? Okay, so this is, I'm going to read you what he, what he opened up to. He opened up to Isaiah 61, verse 1 and 2. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Now, Jesus is quoting this in the New Testament from Isaiah. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach the good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim, someone said proclaim, the acceptable year of the Lord. And then he stopped right there. He didn't say the day of vengeance of our God. Did you know when, in Luke, when he, when, he, when, he, when, he, when he gets to, he says, to, and he finishes up, he says to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. He shuts the book. And he said, today this has been fulfilled in your ears. Guess why? There's a day coming of the vengeance of our God. There is a day of wrath, but today is not that day. Today is a day of salvation. Today is another, another opportunity for you to repent. I'm thankful. He said, Lord, give, him, give, the, give that fig tree one more year. Give my son one more day, Father God. I know you're coming back. Could you, give him, could you wait one more day? I've got a child that needs Jesus. I've got some, there's America needs to be saved. America needs Jesus.
rock America again with a revival. Lord, that, that would shake this nation to its core. That would wake us up from every deception. That would bring the glory of God and the repentance of God and the conviction of God into such a way that sinners would fall on their faces and cry out for mercy and come running into the kingdom of God and be transformed into the image of who they were created to be. The, oh, Father God, they would know who they are. Oh, Lord, bring revival to America. Oh, Father, you're the God of mercy. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let it happen, Father God. So here's where I'm going to. Here's what I'm going to finish up. Isaiah 53, 12. He says, and therefore will I divide him a portion with the great. Talking about Jesus. And it goes, uh, the whole chapter of, of Isaiah 53 is about he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. It's the whole redemption, the whole atonement that Jesus provided. And it says, therefore I divide him. Talking about Jesus, a portion with the great. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he has what? Poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors. And he bare the sins of many. And he made intercession for the transgressors. He made what? Why is he going to appoint him a portion with the great? Because he has made intercession for the transgressors. Now look at this in the, in the, uh, the Living Bible. He pled with God for sinners. Therefore will I give him the honors of one who is mighty and great. Because he pled with God for sinners. The least shall be called the greatest. Who's going to stand in the gap for America? Who's going to stand in, in the gap for the LGBTQ? I don't know all the letters. Who's going to stand in the gap for that, for that group? Who is? Come on, I got is anybody's hands going up. I'll stand in the gap for them. We're standing in the gap. Come on. Yeah, it's easy to throw stones and say, you know what? Yeah, just wipe them out. Just get rid of them. Take them off the face of the earth. I'm fine with that. But God said, I, I desire mercy. I'd rather, I'd rather them repent than destroy them. I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked. My heart is for mercy. But I need someone to, I need, I need, some, I need some people that are able to intercede in, 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 the, in the body of Christ. Where's my intercessors? People who will stand in the gap. Because there's judgment is waiting at the door. And it's time for judgment to fall. But if I can find someone to stand in the gap, I can wait another. I can, I can, I can push back judgment. I can open the door for mercy. I can open the door for, 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 for transformation. And for the gospel to come. And for the Holy Spirit to come. And to, and to shake them and wake them one more time. To give them another, another opportunity to repent. Another chance to repent. Oh God, give us intercessors. Give us intercessors that have the heart of the Father. Lord, give us mercy, Lord God. Oh, we've, we've received mercy. Lord, how, we want to be, we want to become merciful, Lord God. Oh, Lord, give us hearts of mercy this morning, Lord. Hearts of mercy. Father, I thank you, Lord. Let's all stand up this morning. Father, I thank you for this church, Lord, that we're becoming a people of prayer. Not just for ourselves, not just for our wish list, but Lord, we're stepping into the priesthood, the priesthood of the believer. We're, Lord, we're not praying, Father, for uh, bless me, but we're praying, Lord, to have mercy. We're praying, Lord, for to come and save nations and save families, to save people, Lord God, to intervene, Lord God, to break the bondages off, Lord Jesus. And Lord, I thank you that as we pray, Lord God, that your hand is released to move mightily. Lord, you're looking. You're saying, if I can find one person who will stand in the gap, I can bring change. I can bring mercy. I can bring breakthrough. Oh, Father, this Emmanuel church is that people. Lord, we will stand in the gap for others who don't know how to pray. They don't know that you love them. They don't know who they are. They believe the lies of the enemy. They think you hate them. That you've rejected them. But Lord, you love them. Just like you love me. Just like you love me, you love them. And I want to love them with your love. I want to feel your heart for them. I want to pray for them. I remember once I was praying in my car for, for Donna's dad. He wasn't saved at the time. And my, I, all of a sudden, I felt God to start praying through me and I was just screaming out and I was crying in my car by myself and his name was Floyd and I was just, I just 
screaming out, Floyd, I love you. Floyd, I love you. Come to me. I love you, Floyd. It was just, it was just God praying through me. And I remember just weeping and the tears and, and the heart of God were just burning inside of me. And I just let it, I just let it flow out for I don't know how long it was. I just let it, I just released it and I just was interceding for Floyd. And I want you to know about a, probably about a month or two later, he got saved. And then it was probably just a, a couple years later, he went on to he went on home to, to see Jesus. But I got to be a part. I believe that God used me to intercede for him. And you get to play at your highest calling. I mean, it's a high, it's a high calling to be a priest. Kings and priests, kings and priests. That's who you're called to be, a priest. To stand in the gap for others. So Father, we say yes to that calling again this morning. We see ourselves, Lord God, as kings and priests. We're a royal priesthood. Intercessors. Lord, we stand in the gap for Vernita. Lord, we just declare Vernita, will Father, will, will Father have a mighty move of God. But Lord, Vernita, Lord, will be impacted by the kingdom in a mighty way. Oh, Lord, that from Benita, Father God, will, the gospel will go forth, Father, all across the nation from, from Benita, Oklahoma. Lord, that the, the, the light will, will, will spring up brighter and brighter, and it will spread out farther and farther in Jesus' name. And, Lord, we're going to stand in the gap, Lord God, and we're going to see the salvation of Anita. We're going to see, Lord, the deliverance of Anita, the healing of Anita. Lord God, the blessing, Lord, of the kingdom over, over a city, Lord, over families, Father, over, over, over uh, mental illness, over poverty, Lord God. Oh, we declare victory, Father. We intercede. Come on, we're going to stand for our city. We're going we're to cry out for Anita. We're going to intercede for a city that needs Jesus. Oh, Father, I thank you for Anita. Lord, I thank you for a revival for Vernita, Lord God. Lord, from the mayor, Lord, to all of our public servants, Lord God, that a revival would flow through this town, that, Lord, that people would be, be, Father, so alive and so on fire for Jesus, that, Lord, every place you go, they'd be spreading the gospel. Lord God, they'd be on their knees praying. The houses of, the houses of, 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 uh, of believers would be full of hungry hearts in, in, in every corner. Every church, Lord, that's called by your name would be full of hungry hearts that are worshiping you, that are serving you. Oh, Lord, that are loving each other. Oh, God, let it be here. Let the world know that, Father, we're your, your disciples by the love we have for others, for others, for others. Thank you for Impact Ministries, Lord going into the highways and the byways. Lord, those that the world has rejected and dismissed, Lord, you, you're, you're calling their name. You're calling their name. The ones that we went to see yesterday. Oh, yeah, Father God, you're calling Mark's name this morning. You're calling Mark's name. Hallelujah. We call them in, Lord God. Every single one of them. Sean, we're calling, it, we're calling Sean's name this morning. Oh, Father God, that he'll know the glory of God. He'll know the goodness of God. Oh, Father God, he'll know the salvation of Jesus. Lord, that he'll be set free from every addiction in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father God, that he'll know that he'll, he'll be a deliverer. Lord, he'll be an overcomer, Lord God. Oh, Father, break through in his life, Lord God. Break through in all their lives. Break through, Lord God. Father, I thank you for labors in the harvest who aren't afraid to get their feet and their hands dirty for Jesus. Father, I bless this house. And I bless every member here, Lord God, with the compassion and the heart of mercy as intercessors. In Jesus' mighty name. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. Look at look at somebody and say, You're a priest.